book, you know, whether it be Mao's little red one or, or some particular religious book that says, here's all the answers, okay, now go off to work, don't worry about this anymore, it's all taken care of. Many people find a certain security and solace in that. The scientists were between a rock and a hard place. Their own discoveries were pointing them towards an intelligent designer. This is this dislike of mixing religion into physics. I think they were somewhat afraid that if it was admitted that the reason the world is the way it is uh, has to do with our own existence. That that could be hijacked by the creationists, by the intelligent designers. And of course what they would say is, yes, we always told you so. There is a benevolent somebody way up high in the universe who created the universe exactly so that we could live. I think physicists shrank at the idea of uh, getting involved in such things. Some people say that this apparent fine-tuning of the universe is a brute fact. We wouldn't be here to worry about the issue otherwise, and that's the way things are. Others are a bit more perplexed and invoke providence or a creator to explain that things were set up with the aim of producing a complex universe. Some people are satisfied with a religious explanation, whereas I think it is a scientific question which deserves to be addressed by cosmologists. And cosmologists have found a solution to the fine-tuning problem. It is simple and elegant, but it requires a leap of faith as profound as any religious belief. If our planet is not alone, if it is one of billions of planets, orbiting billions of stars in hundreds of billions of galaxies inside our universe, could our universe also be one of many? It may turn out that our concept of the universe, as astronomers see it now, is a very restrictive one. And what we have traditionally called our universe is one of many. If there are other universes, their laws of nature could all be set differently in their own Big Bangs. If there have been many Big Bangs, and if, and this is the second assumption, the outcome of those Big Bangs were universes governed by different physical laws, then we could imagine that there would be one universe governed by any particular law we care to envisage. And therefore, it would not be at all surprising if there should be one universe that was tuned. If our laws of nature are only one set of values amongst the limitless possibility of others, then the fine-tuning of our universe, once again, falls within the laws of chance. Our law of gravity would be but one of trillions of different values for gravity. The same goes for the cosmic constant, for atomic charge, even the numbers of dimensions. Suddenly, amongst all the many possibilities, it's not so surprising that at least one possesses the precise set of laws that allow human beings to evolve. If you go into a clothes shop and there's a large stock, you're not surprised to find one suit that fits. Whereas if there's only one suit, you are surprised. So many universes governed by different laws would remove any reason for surprise at the apparent fine-tuning in our universe. With one mighty intellectual bound, cosmologists could once again happily accept that our universe suited our existence precisely without the need for a fine-tuner, a creator. Martin Rees coined a new word to describe the idea. 
if it turns out that there's more to reality than just our Big Bang, or the aftermath of our Big Bang, then we have to either redefine our universe, or use another word, and I've chosen the word multiverse, to describe this whole ensemble of Big Bangs, this whole ensemble of universes. The concept of the multiverse saves the scientific universe at a stroke. We now have a natural mechanism to explain why there is all this diversity out there, which in turn eliminates the need for the fine-tuning that uh, some people might have liked uh, because it would say that there was a fine-tuner. We don't need a fine-tuner. Yet theoretically, these other universes will always be beyond the scope of our telescopes. So is the multiverse really a scientific solution? One thing which people often object to when confronted with the whole multiverse idea is they're saying, saying this can't be science, you know, talking about all these things you can't see. If, if I have a theory of involving entities that I can never touch, never measure, never observe, that's not science, then is it? And uh, I'd say quite to the contrary. And what makes good science is not whether you can see it or not, but whether you can rule out the theory or not. Having raised the possibility of other universes, cosmologists started to wonder what they might be like. And as they wondered, they found logic had set another trap. The multiverse idea had set them on a path that led them back, once again, to a creator. To avoid the conclusion that an intelligent force had had a hand in our creation, cosmologists invoked the principle of multiple universes. But what potential might those other universes hold for the evolution of complexity? We have no idea how much variety other universes might display, and since we have no contact with them, all we can say is that there must be certain potential for complexity in those universes. It's easy to imagine universes that would be less propitious for life than ours, but of course we may not be in the optimum universe in a sense. We can imagine universes that might be more propitious. These of course will be potentialities far beyond the powers of our brains to conceive, but we can't assume in this grander cosmos that there couldn't be other universes displaying more complexity than ours. Although we are completely cut off from these other universes, it's not impossible that one day we might be able to prove their existence. I think it's a question that we can't even address at the present. Um, I think we simply have to rely on the ingenuity of future, de uh, future um, generations of, of, of physicists, or whatever they are, call themselves at that time, uh, to, uh, to find their way into new ways of thinking about these things. The atomic theory was uh, put forward by, uh, by ancient Greeks uh, two and a half thousand years ago. Uh, it took a couple of thousand years to verify it. It would not surprise me if it takes some fraction of that kind of time before we really absolutely understand these ideas, before we become totally comfortable with these ideas, before we say these ideas are hard, absolutely hard science. But can we ever know what these other universes are like? Somewhere. Among this infinite collection, there must be those similar to our own. And some of them will be less evolved, and others much more advanced. We have some concept of how on Earth 
life has evolved and has, from simple beginnings, led to creatures like ourselves with at least a certain level of intelligence. There seems to have been a gradual increase in intelligence.